Hey everyone, before we open today's file, please make sure to follow us on Instagram at d.s.radio where you can find all the images that go along with today's case. You can drop us an email at contact.dsradio at gmail.com. You can find all of our socials in the Linktree bio on our Instagram profile, including links to merch. If you're feeling especially generous, you can join our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash dystopian simulation radio, where you can get access to our exclusive Instagram page and make suggestions for upcoming episode topics that you would like us to cover. Speaking of Patreon, thanks to our Patreons, Riff Cult, Cropley Crab, Cash Broadus, Raspberry Jr., Jason R. Nelson, Creepy Paper, Jamie Suit, Michael Laughlin, Lindsay Keller, Mike Wright, Gria Weaver, Kelsey Carithers, Linz Gibbon, Drake Holvig, Only Child, Michael M, Wesley Akers, Riaz K, Emily Medeiros, Pip, Heather Wynn, Graves, Devin Sweatshirt, The Ordained Sinister Minister, and Philip Hoffman. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a very special Brucey bonus edition of Dystopian Simulation Radio. Shout out to OSW Review there. Well, this episode has actually come about because we've gone over our time limit for the month and might as well use what we're paying for on the podcast platform. Hey, hey, there you go. Lindsay and I are recording this separately this week as she's out on a field mission in Sweden, but she'll be popping up throughout today's episode, don't worry. There will be audio differences between us, and I'm not going to heavily edit this, so it sounds like it's time for some, yes, there it is, royalty three stock music. Now, before we get started, I just wanted to give a shout out to the podcast Morbidology, who gave us a lovely shout out themselves last week. We've had some new listeners come our way as a result, so thanks to Emily for doing that. And in turn, if any of our listeners haven't heard of Morbidology, head over there and give their latest episode a listen. I know I'm kind of promoting Microsoft to a computer convention here, but I'd like to repay the favor. Today, we're going to be talking about some of our recommended horror movies in the lead-up to Halloween. All Hallows' Eve is just around the corner, so now is the perfect time as the world, or at least the UK, descends into absolute chaos once again to snuggle up with your favourite serial killer and watch a couple of horror flicks. Stick around until the end and you'll also be treated to one of our microphone tests involving everyone's most beloved goat-voiced angry punk, Glenn Danzig. So let's get to the list. This is not either of ours absolute best top uh, horror movie lists or anything like that. It's just a selection of movies that we wanted to recommend to our listeners in the run-up to Halloween. We've each chosen five films, so let's get started with Lindsay's number five. First up, a 1985 horror comedy directed by Dan O'Bannon, the classic Return of the Living Dead. An employee working at a medical supply warehouse unleashes a zombie apocalypse into the world when he accidentally releases a toxic gas and reanimates one of the nearby cadavers. Now their answer to this is to take this reanimated cadaver, aka zombie, and burn him at a nearby mortuary. However, it causes a toxic rain to spill down, soak into the soil, and reanimate every dead body in the vicinity. This movie has everything from punks and zombies to a soundtrack featuring the cramps and the damned. Not to mention this classic quote. I mean, I got something to say, you know. What do you think this is all about? You think this is a fucking costume? This is a way of life. A couple of interesting facts about Return of the Living Dead. This movie popularized the brain-eating zombies as opposed to the flesh-eating zombies we all know and love. So if you're wondering where that classic brains zombies comes from, it's Return of the Living Dead. They're also one of the first movies to depict talking zombies if you discount Day of the Dead, which was released uh, June 30th, 1985. 
The zombies in Return of the Living Dead can actually hold conversations and there's a scene where one of the zombies explains why they need to eat brains. Another fun fact about Return of the Living Dead is Dan O'Brannon also paid some of the zombie extras to chomp down on real cow brains while shooting. He also ate them himself before asking any of the actors to, of course. There's a classic scene in the movie where one of the characters, called Trash, does a naked dance in the cemetery and originally the scene had to be reshot after the producer Graham Henderson walked in while they were shooting and complained that they couldn't show pubic hair on TV. So the actor was made to remove her pubic hair and then reshoot the scene again. Henderson allegedly walked back in when they were reshooting and said, now it's even worse, you can see everything, which is why Trash looks like a quote department store mannequin in the final scene that made it into the movie cut. Um, she had to wear like a little cover over her crotch area and if you watch the movie you'll see it does look kind of strange but yeah that's the story behind that. So if you're going to watch any horror movie this Halloween please make it Return of the Living Dead. Thanks Linz. now it's time for my number five and it is Chakushin Ari or One Missed Call is the English title of that one. Now I'm talking about the original 2003 Japanese movie, not the remake of the same name. And it, the original was directed by my favorite director, Mike Takashi. While most might recommend Audition from his back catalog, I decided to forego that objectively better made movie and recommend just a wonderful example of the turn of the millennium J-horror wave. One Missed Call is nothing but an impeccably made take on The Ring. This time, it's not a cursed videotape, but cursed voicemails. Now, I know that sounds silly, but somehow they make it work, and they also make a ringtone creepy as hell. Sundal Bolong. This movie features Indonesian scream queen and horror icon Susanna. Sundal Bolong is a movie released in 1981 and Susanna plays the part of a Sundal Bolong, which is the ghost of a wronged woman, often a sex worker, in Javanese folklore and mythology, with a large hole in her back. So it's a classic Asian horror movie ghost with long black hair, pale skin, a piercing glare, and a penchant for terrorizing the locals. It's sort of a revenge horror paranormal movie and the slashing starts in the second half of the film, and it includes a classic scene of Sandal Bolong drinking boiling hot soup from a food stand at night, and it spills through the gaping hole in her back. She also attempts to satisfy her insatiable undead appetite with chicken satay sticks that fall through the festering wound in her back. A nice intro to classic Indonesian horror and Susanna's extensive filmography. This was one of the first Indonesian horror movies that I ever watched and it really got me into learning about the superstitious beliefs, folklore and ghost stories of Indonesia. Ghost stories in Indonesia are quite unique in my opinion and they're very interesting to read about. I remember when I was staying in Indonesia reading a newspaper about a small village that kept getting robbed of its TV sets. Their leading theory for who was behind these robberies was that it could be a pochong. And a pochong is an Indonesian ghost that is supposedly the soul of a dead person who was trapped in a shroud that would be wrapped around the body in traditional Muslim burials there in Indonesia. According to tradition, the soul of a dead person stays on earth for exactly 40 days after they die and for that time the shroud shouldn't be untied. If the shroud isn't untied after 40 days the body will arise from its grave and hop around to tell people that it needs to be released so it can leave the earth. Pachongs are often depicted in horror movies. They're wrapped from head to toe in a white shroud and because they can't walk all they can do is hop so they'll hop around but they can also move at a really fast speed so you could see them far off in the distance and then they'd suddenly be right in front of your face. Potrongs and Sundalbolongs are often portrayed in horror movies. You'll see a lot of movies about these characters and many more. So if you're interested in not only watching a horror movie this Halloween, but learning about ghosts in another culture, you should definitely look up Indonesian horror movies and read about Indonesian ghosts and folklore. Now it's time for my number four. And my number four is Rec, R-E-C. That's the 2007 Spanish language original film. Now, found footage movies were very old hat by 2007. The Blair Witch Project hype was completely dead, and not many expected a truly terrifying movie to be released in the genre, let alone to come out of Spain. But it did, and boy, is it terrifying. 
A documentary crew are filming a pedestrian TV show about those who work while everyone else is in bed, which goes quickly awry, and they find themselves trapped in a nightmarish apartment block with seemingly no way out. Of all the films I'm recommending today, this is the scariest one. Lake Mungo. So this is an Australian horror released on the 18th of June 2005, directed by Joel Anderson. So this movie is about a girl named Alice who drowns while out swimming, and soon after her death, her family's home displays the classic signs of paranormal activity. It's shot in the style of a documentary, and the film follows Alice's family as they investigate what they believe to be a haunting, while slowly uncovering sinister elements behind Alice's mysterious death. I really love this movie when I first watched it. It's not gory or, you know, action fills in any way, but it is definitely not what you expect it to be. I was watching it thinking it was one thing when it was actually another, and I honestly really enjoyed this movie, and it did creep me out. It slowly built its way up to the end, which I'm not going to spoil anything. I just have to say, watch it. If you like paranormal horror movies with twist, this one is definitely for you. Okay, now on to my third pick, and it is Suspiria, Dario Argento's 1977 original. Although I've heard good things about the remake, uh, the original film is worth seeing for its color palette alone. It's the story of an American ballet student who transfers to a German dance school, which is weird and wacky, before it's revealed that the school is a front for something much more sinister. Now, if the gore doesn't get you, Goblin's terrifying soundtrack will. Cairo, aka Pulse. There is a US remake of this, I believe, but I'm referring to the 2001 Japanese techno horror movie directed by Kiyoshi Kurosawa. So this movie is told in two parallel plot lines, and it tells the story of entities invading IRL via the internet. So much like the ring or Ringu, in the way that it passed on a curse through the tangible trading of VHS, in Cairo it passes on hauntings via the internet through involuntary user viewings of browsers and videos online. People begin to disappear and commit suicide and it's just very creepy and sinister in its own special way. I think Cairo is a must see. There was scenes in this movie that honestly unnerved me and <laughs> creeped me out when I first saw them. I actually had to go back and watch a specific parts of each scene again because I was just like, I think it's quite original in how it portrays ghosts and I like the idea behind what the characters perceive ghosts to be in their own dialogue when they discuss it. It's got a lonely grim atmosphere to it and it's also got that investigative element to it too that I like in my paranormal horrors. I think Cairo is definitely a must-see. I'm gonna say that about every movie that I mention when I'm talking about my top five here so um <laughs> but honestly give Cairo a watch if you like ghosts paranormal stuff it's a great um j-horror from the early 2000s number two is psycho 2 and hitchcock's classic belongs on my list of the greatest films of all time i'd like to however recommend the underappreciated sequel psycho 2 which is quite possibly the greatest slasher film that nobody ever talks about Norman Bates is released from prison and returns to his home. He's determined to go straight and to put all of his past transgressions behind him. Very quickly, notes start turning up from Mother, and then it's Bodies. Psycho 2 is a real gem that will have you guessing all the way up to its exciting conclusion. Last but not least, I want to recommend a movie that I most recently watched at the cinema, Malignant. For those that want a cinema experience this Halloween, I recommend watching Malignant. It's a supernatural horror film that was released on September 10th, 2021. I think it should still be in the cinema. It's directed by James Wan, who you might know from the Saw franchise, um, the Insidious movies, and The Conjuring. The synopsis did not prepare me for what I was about to watch, and I was pleasantly surprised and totally entertained by this movie throughout as the plot unraveled and revealed itself. I did not expect it to go where it was going. I had an inkling as I was watching it, but I just honestly really enjoyed it. It's not 
not exactly scary per se, but it's action packed, it's entertaining, and it's weird as fuck. And it was really fun. My review, I would describe it as a B movie with a budget and basket case on steroids. I hope that wasn't a spoiler, but uh, yeah, you want to have a cinema experience this Halloween. Malignant, it's fun, all right? Just go see it. And my number one is They Live. Okay. So maybe this isn't a horror movie in the true sense of the word, but John Carpenter manages to inject horror throughout this sci-fi classic. Rowdy Roddy Piper puts in a tremendous performance as a drifter who finds a pair of glasses that reveals the world for what it really is and what a terrifying vision it is. This movie partly inspired this podcast, or rather some of our aesthetic, and it features one of the greatest fight scenes of all time. And as John Nader says, I'm here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. So there you have it. Ten wonderful and different movies for you to crack on with this Halloween. Dystopian Simulation Radio's regular broadcast continue on Monday with episode four. Now, please make sure that you like, subscribe, and rate us five stars on your favorite podcast platform. Happy Halloween, everybody, and I hope you have a good one. I hope I recommended something you haven't seen before or recommended something that you actually watched and enjoyed. If my audio quality has been um, a bit worse than Chris's today, it's because I am recording this from Sweden. I'm on the move. We just wanted to get this out as a little bonus for you guys and wish you a happy Halloween. So I hope it's listenable and I will see you on Instagram at d.s.radio. And let us know if you watched any of these movies and what you thought of them. Thank you very much. And remember, if you've got the questions, we've got the answers. Until then, I'll leave you with a microphone test we did a few weeks ago featuring Glenn Danzig himself. Okay, so this is something that I've wanted to do for uh, quite a long time. Oh, with me? Uh, yes, but there's never been like a format to do it with. Oh, okay. So now we have one. Uh, this seems like appropriate uh, Patreon content. So, Patreon? Patreon. So we both love, in various ways, Glenn Danzig. With all my soul. With all our souls. And uh, we have talked for years about the infamous story of Danzig and his bricks. <laughs> yes. For anyone who's unaware... Can you do a little, like, in a nutshell? Well, what you're going to find out about it in a minute, because what I thought would be really fun as a bit of bonus content was if we read the story out aloud. Oh, my God. Okay. So this is from a infamous, um, an infamous uh, AIM or Yahoo or whatever conversation from, like, 10, 15 years ago now uh, of two people discussing Glenn Danzig. And uh, it picked up loads of steam and it turns out to be actually true because people uh, took some pictures outside Danzig's house, which is a creepy fucking thing to do. But there was just a big pile of bricks there. Mm. So, Oh, on an otherwise like perfect, pristine neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. He had this pile of bricks and everyone would complain about it. Exactly. And that's all I really know about it. So what I want to do here is read this story. So I'm going to be Justin in mm-hmm. this story. Uh I would like you to be the person who's listed as me. The other guy. Yep. So let's begin. DSR Theatre. Dude, Danzig lives next door to me in LA, down the street, and he's the worst neighbour ever. Dude, I have Danzig stories. No shit. Like one awesome one. Yes, dude. I can't believe you said Danzig. You realise this may be our number one topic at work. Dude. So, okay. Here's on Danzig's story. We always say, what do you think Danzig is doing right now? So Danzig lives in this shit hole house near me in Los Feliz. About a hundred yards down the street. His house is super run down. Except he has a fucking amazing Jaguar in the backyard. Anyway... It's a palace of evil. (laughs) So he just has this huge pile of bricks in his front yard. 
and the house looks like an evil Pixar house. So anyway, his neighbor was like, dude, Danzig, please, you're bringing property values down with these bricks in your yard. And Danzig was pissed. So anyway, back and forth with this neighbor and Danzig. <laughs> and finally, one day, I see Danzig outside in his front yard and he's hurling bricks into a dumpster <laughs> and he's scre- screaming, Here I am, motherfucker, just cleaning up my motherfucking bricks, bitch. <laughs> just super loud to no one in particular for two hours. It was amazing. Like, I couldn't even think about other things because it was so amazing. Oh my god, this is amazing. Dude, it blew my mind because it was Danzig as just a really poor homeowner. (laughs) (laughs) Clean it up, my motherfucking bricks, bitch! (laughs) Get you, Barbara. <laughs>